Hello, I'm Tom, and in this video, I'm going to be um, going through the Sound Toys Rack in Reaper and showing some ways that you can use Reaper functionality to enhance what you can do with the Sound Toys Rack. Um, so if you don't have the Sound Toys Rack and you're a Reaper user, then you can um, download a free trial for, for 30 days, but um, wait until they have a sale on before you actually buy it because it is quite price sensitive. And if you're a Sound Toys Rack user, um, but don't have Reaper, then it doesn't really matter because most of these ideas are things that you could do in any major door. I don't know how to do it in all the doors, but I can show you in Reaper and it should be more or less the equivalent thing in other doors. So I should say to start with, that um, I think the Sound Toys Rack is probably my favorite VST for delays and modulations and general sound coloring. Um, but they don't do everything. They tend to only do things which they can pretty much do better than anybody else. So it doesn't include a dedicated compressor or limiter or anything like that. And there are some things which a lot of people would like, like um, making it resizable. But I can understand that that would be um, mean completely re redesigning it. So that would be a lot of work. But there are a couple of things which I think would be relatively easy to add, which would greatly improve it. So I do think they missed a couple of tricks. So the things I'm going to be going into are to do with automation and also to do with routing. So to start with, with the automation, you do have some functionality on individual effects like the tremul tremulator and the filter feek, and also, also on certain settings in Echo Boy, where you can um, use automation to set um, wave patterns and sequences. So say on tremulator, if it's set to rhythm, if I go to tweak, You've got a whole load of different patterns. You can set them to different sizes. You can use different styles. You can do different shape presets. Um, so that's cool. But that functionality only applies to here. And you have got something similar in Filter Free. So if you look at, um, I'll put it on to tweak again. Um, and if you go to the steps here and you do rhythm, you've got a similar kind of thing here as you have on here, as you have on the, um, you have on the tremulator and you've also got um, some other options so you've got um, you can choose like LFO you can choose you can choose different shapes for that and um, you can use different steps on it and you can change them but what would be really nice is if you could actually have separate components for these um, which you could then apply to any of the effects and you could save settings on the actual, you could save settings individually on the component, which um, um, is a, a, like a controller and then just apply it to the other effects. Um, so to give a comparison um, in Axe Effects, um, I'll just have a look on ones here. I know it's got it. So say on here, um, a similar thing, Thing, sort of thing which would happen quite a lot. Actually, no, this isn't. I'll, I'll try another example. Um, nope, not this one, but these ones show the routing, which is what I'm going to go to in a minute. Or this one, this is showing different routing again. I'll come back to this. Um, Okay, I'll try this one. I think this one's got it on. Yeah, so this has got a volume pan. This is what I was looking for. So again, this does a different routing, so it splits it. So I'm just showing you these for comparison, but I'll come back to that. So on the volume pan here, you can set, you right click it, and you've got, um, you can set a whole different set of sources. So this, this is using volume. So the harder you play the guitar, the more it does it. And what it does on this particular one is it, um, opens up the spread of the stereo so it'll, it makes it wider when it gets louder which is quite a common thing that's um, something i showed on another reaper video and you've got a whole different set of ones so you can set up um different lfos and stuff on it but you can you can only do you can do this on other controls like on an amp so you can do it with anyone where it's got these lines here you can just right click on it and then you can set up um, modifiers to control them but um Better than that still is what you can do with Guitar Rig. So on Guitar Rig, 
you actually have a whole set of separate components of sequencers, your envelope one, LFO, step sequencer. And I'll show you an example of one here. So here you can see you've got a, a separate analog sequencer. So you could save your own presets on that to use them in multiple other places. And then what it's doing is it's stepping through here and it's moving the pitch pedal. So it's moving that about according to a sequence. Um, so that, yeah, that something like that, where you've got um, all the different um, components separately and then you can combine them would be really cool. Um, so the other thing which you can't do directly in effects rack um, itself is when you've got any presets like this, it just goes in a line. So we have the sound coming in here and it'll go here and then it'll go here and then it'll go out. Um, but like I showed you with these other Axe Effects presets here, you can um, get completely different sounds by routing it in different ways. So this is one I tried to reproduce something similar to this using it. No, not this one. I'll have a look at this one. Yeah. So this one here is um, one I tried to reproduce in the first example. So this is so with this, it's if it was just like um, effects rack, it would just be all a straight line. But this is goes off. So one part goes off to here, one part goes to here, goes to there, and then they combine back again in here. And that will give a much more complex and completely different sound. So um, you can see how it's done. This is in Helix as well. It's done in the same way. So it's basically a grid. But um, in Guitar Rig, um, I'll get you an example of that on Guitar Rig. So, OK, so here you've got split. So you have to split, split A, so split it to one side on here. So that's going to one setting of delay man with another. And then you go to B and that's going to another one. And then you combine them back in with the mix. Um, so that opens up a whole load of different possibilities. And you again, you've got separate components of that. So you've, you've got um, split and you split MS there. But what you've also got is you've got a crossover. So the crossover, what you can do is you can split the frequencies. So you can have, um, say, lower frequencies go off to one part of the effects chain and then higher frequencies go off to another part of it. Um, effects chain. So this is all stuff you can do in Reaper. This is all stuff you can use just using JS plugins and using standard plugins to do it. So you can reproduce all this. But if you had that kind of functionality available um, for routing within um, Soundtoys Rack, that would be really cool. So um, you might be thinking that, that well, that it looks a lot easier to see the routing. When you get complex routing, it's a lot easier with this kind of layout. And the effects rack and here isn't so easy when it gets very complex. You get some big complex, um, you get some big complex presets on here. It's quite difficult to see where everything's going. But um, what would be even better would be to do something like amplitude. So here you have the racks laying up, so you just see the units. But then along the top, you basically have a diagram here. So you can see this is using two amps at the same time. So it splits them up, and you can see the routing before it comes out. So that would be really good. So, OK, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through a couple of presets I have made up um, where I've used different types of routing. So for this first one here, I'm going to bring up, um, I've used a, a routing which is basically like this. So the way to do it, so this would be the first part of the chain where it's just going along. And then you go to here plug-in pin connector and you can see that what it's doing is it's coming in here from one to two. Oh, first of all, you need to set it up for the amount of channels you need. So I've used six on this one and then it's going to three and four, which will be this one here. And it's going to five and six, which is that one. So it's going off the two different routes. And then on here, it's going from three and four to five and six. And on this last one, it's taking in on five and six and it's sending it back. So this is receiving inputs directly from here and from here. So um, I'll just play you a bit of this to see to hear what I've done with this.
Okay, so if you want to see the routing, um, you can look at the root matrix, but another way to do it, which I only just found recently, is go to track wiring. I and mean, then if you look at track wiring, you can see the different routing I've done. So you can see, this is the first one here. It goes off in two different directions and then goes back. Um, this one goes off in three different directions before coming up. So it goes on, splits it into three different ways rather than one on the other way. So this one is like, um, yeah, this one's more like, Now this is just going off two ways. I'll try one with preset. Yeah, so this one is doing more that kind of setup. And then um and then this way is doing it a different way. So you can see on these just how it's laid out. So if you've got um all the different controls from different channels, you can move them about and route them about differently on here. But if you want to actually change them on here, you have to just click on here and do it through the, the same way. So you can't do that. But I just thought I'd show you that bit. So on this second example here, um, I'm also using some automation. So the routing, I think, is um, check what the routing. I'll check the routing in a bit. But the the actually this is just going out in different directions and bringing it back. But I'm using some um, automation on the pan man so it's changing the width so for that what you do is click on param go and effects parameter list you can see i've set it here and this will open it up so this is using the volume so what you should see happening is this the volume comes in here it moves up here this will start moving the width button here so it will start panning it differently so i'll go back to that in a second i'll just check the routing on here so you can see it Okay, yeah, so it goes in and it's going out to all of them at the same time on here. So this one, just check on that. Yeah, so that's going, so it goes out. Yeah, so this is going out to other ones and coming back here. And this goes back out. So this is basically doing this kind of thing. So you've got on here, you've got like a short reverb, which I've done a long reverb and a delay and then a bit of sound shaping for the sound shaping thing. I've just used um, a radiator, which I think sounds really good. So you don't have a dedicated compressor. So you can use um, distressor to do sort of saturation type compression. And you've also got. Um, where's it gone? Yeah, Devil Lock also is like sort of saturation type compression, but I think that works better on bass and drums. But this does work. I'm just using a preset on here. So I'm just using um, Little Tube Amp, and that seems to work very well. It adds a little bit of extra clarity and depth and warmth to the effects. So that's worth giving a go at the beginning of the effects chain. So, okay, I'll, I'll play you a bit of this as well so you can see how this is rooted. This is rooted in a different way. And um, oh, actually, I'll get it up so you can see the parameter again because it's gone off. So here you go, pan man whip. I'll move this down. I'll move this over here. So I'll just move this down a bit more. I'll move that over and then I'll play it. Okay, so have a listen to this one then. And you, so you should see this bit here. So this bit moves up and down, it'll move here, and then that bit here moves that across. Okay, so hopefully that's given you some ideas of things you can try yourself. Um, there's a whole load of other things you can do. There's whole different combinations of routing. Um, you can also use LFOs to um, control all the different controls. So um, you've got 
all the controls are available to you for Reaper. You can control them by, by LFO. And you can also, what you could also do is because you've got the full range um, of the sequences on um, like these, and these two here on um, the Tremulator and Filter Freak, what you could do is you could set these to actually put no output at all, but then use the controls which these are controlling to link via um, uh, effects parameter. So you could then link that to another parameter in a completely different effect and get these ones to basically run silently but control the other ones. But um, it doesn't give you any power to do that within the FX rack itself, which seems like a shame. Uh, so um, it would be really nice if they added like some separate modulator con um, control or actually how do they call it in Guitar Rig? They call it, um, yeah, modifier. So it'd be really cool to have a separate modifier control, which you could link across different ones and also to have the ability to set up your own routing in a similar way that you can do in Axe FX or Helix or even in Guitar Rig. Or, or both, a combination of both, like Amplitude, so you could link it there and then you could have a graph seeing it. That would be the ideal thing. Um, so let me know if there's any other things you think they could or should include with the Infects rack. Um, and one other thing, not specific to Effects rack, I always thought it would be nice if they'd do, is if they set up something where you could share um, Effects presets similar to say um, Fractal have the Axe Exchange where anybody can just upload demos of um, presets they've done and then everybody can share them and download them and try them. So you can set up something like that um, very cheaply and very easily. There's plenty of sites which basically take you through how to do that. So it seems a shame they've never actually done that as well. Um, so yeah, if anybody down toys wants to talk to me about some of my ideas, I'm obviously just a um, amateur musician and bedroom producer, but I am a professional software analyst and developer so I am do have quite a lot of experience for the whole software development cycle and I do have a lot of ideas and maybe as an amateur musician um, I've probably got a different perspective than um, more experienced professional musicians um, which could be useful um, so yeah so um, hopefully this has been useful to you and given you some ideas I've got plenty of other videos if you want to check them out and thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye.